and as you can see this lava flow has caved in and made it a nice slope though steep it's still easy for bighorn sheep and deer to make it up and down this slope as opposed to the cliff over here it would be impossible for any animal to do so now we're going to go up this game trail and have a look at what's up on top Okay, we're at the top of the lava flow here, and as you can see, we have an entirely different environment. And largely, it's temperature driven. There's a different, it's much warmer. It's always warmer up here because of the dark lava rock absorbing the uh, radiant energy from the sun. But also, it's a different environment because the lava rock, the decayed lava rock, is what makes up the soil and so you have a different soil and you have a different temperature situation and right now we have a that unique situation where everything is right for the plant communities to just really take off we've had some recent rains and we have this beautiful bloom and if you were a bighorn sheep or an antelope or a deer this would be the place that you'd want to be for grazing as opposed to down in the wash or out across the greasewood flats. Now at times water will come down this canyon and fill this tank. I have seen water in it. Uh, it doesn't seem to hold water very well right now. Uh, these tanks change over the ages. Uh, perhaps 500 or 1,000 years ago, or maybe two or 3,000 years ago when these glyphs were made, uh, this tank may have held water better. We don't really know. My guess is it did because there are some glyphs in the area of this tank. And so it would have been another resource for the animals. Of course, they would have had the plant community up on top of the lava flow, and then they would have had water. And again, that's part of that focus point of the environment. And one of the things that we see in that focus point, of course, is large animals. Bighorn sheep, deer, antelope. Those animals all need to drink water. They, they cannot do without water. Some animals in the desert can do without water, like the kit fox or the jackrabbit. But the uh, bighorn sheep, the antelope, the deer, they have to drink water. So this would have been a focal point in their life, a focal point in the environment, and a reason to put glyphs here, and a reason for people to come here to hunt those animals. And of course, not only for food, but for hide uh, and horn and stuff that they used uh, those things for, for instance, uh, deer antler was often used to make arrowheads because it was hard but also kind of giving. So you might come up here to hunt deer not just for food but also for the antler. Uh, and the bighorn sheep's horn had particular uses and you would have had an animal that would have had a large hide so if you were preparing for the winter you might have needed those hides to stay warm so there's a lot of reasons other than just food, but it was a focal point for both the people and the wildlife and even the plant life. Once you start to understand these focus points, you start to understand glyphs a little better. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little journey that we went through and our, our understanding has increased on how the environment 
and the various attributes like the lava flow and the plants that grow on it and how the petroglyphs are related to the choke point or focus point in the environment uh, and how they showed actually bighorn sheep and how we can see that the environment like the water tank that we're here at, uh, the game trail, tell you that those kind of animals, whether it was bighorn sheep or antelope or deer, uh, were in the area. With that, I'd like to uh, just thank you. My name is Carlos Gallinger, and this is the way of things in the desert. Thank you.